and table matters item 13 186 city manager whereas the city council finds that safe and sanitary housing is a critic is critical to Augusta's residents and property owners and whereas it is in the interest of taxpayers that any tax dollars spent on housing be spent on units that meet basic safe and sanitary standards now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Augusta that the following ordinance be enacted general assistance housing lodging rooming and licensed hotel habilit habitability certification any property owner property manager or agent receiving or wishing to receive rental payments from the city on behalf of any applicant must comply with MRSA title 25 section 2464 MRSA title 25 section 2468 2009 NFPA life safety 101 codes the land use ordinance for the city of Augusta and the Augusta safe and sanitary housing code the city reserves the right to inspect any rental unit and lodging rooming and licensed hotel unit for housing assistance prior to occupancy or as needed the purpose of the inspection is to determine whether that unit or dwelling in addition to all common spaces are safe to occupy and in compliance with the laws ordinances and codes outlined here the city manager is authorized to promulgate rules dealing detailing such inspection requirements consistent with state with city council policies the city may withhold payments of rent or other assistance if any portion of a property is found to be unsafe for occupancy due to violations of the laws ordinances and codes outlined here is there any public comment on item 13 186 your honor ma'am yes I'll wait. Come, come forward, please. Yep. Yep. Sure. Just come up to the uh, podium and uh, please uh, identify yourself. My name is Gina Turcott, and Gina. I am a lifetime resident here in Augusta. I was born and raised. Um, I'll be 45 next month. <clears throat> Although I grew up in a um, home that my parents bought for us, um, I started moving around in apartments at the age of 12, and I have lived in apartments for the majority of my adult life. Um, I'm a single mom. Um, I, the last time I held a full-time job was 2007 when the economy took a dive. Um, prior to that, I was capable of <clears throat> paying car payments and all the other related expenses, um, pay a monthly rent on a full house. It was a two-bedroom Cape Cod on Patterson Street, um, as well as all of the utilities involved in that. Um, that was in 1999. Since 1999, with everything that's happened in our economy and in our world and in the housing market itself, I have, I have been forced to live on Washington Street Place on Sand Hill, <clears throat> which I had just had to move out of a month ago because that building got shut down. As a result of my experiences living in that building and my experiences leading up to living in that building, which I believe most of you gentlemen recognize me from back in October of 2012, where I came before you the last time asking for help in getting an oil leak repaired at 239 Coney Street, which to um, my, my understanding, and I confirmed this with Robert Overton, that leak is still occurring to this day. My understanding is because the recommendation was from the DEP was only a recommendation, there was no order for this leak to be repaired. So this, this oil is polluting the air, the water, and the ground soil in that residential neighborhood. Beyond that, I have been forced to um, apply my rights as a tenant um, living in these uh, dilapidated buildings because of the economy because of the um, lack of proper buildings to, to, to live in. And I actually support this housing inspection program. Not only do I support it, but I have an idea that I believe will resolve this problem. Not only will it resolve the problem, but it's a win-win, win-win situation. Um, as a result of my being a tenant, um, I have created a nonprofit organization in the state of Maine which is now called the Maine Tenants Justice League and our purpose is to educate tenants about what their rights are as tenants 
<clears throat> what the basic life safety codes are that are required to be met by each building owner who puts their private property out to the public for the sole purpose of private financial gain. We have to look at the situation at the bare bones. The bare bones is we have private property owners who have a free will choice that the government will not impede upon, which is the, the, the freedom to own their own property, to do with it as they will, provided it's safe, decent, and sanitary, and, and is not some kind of burden to the community or the city services. When a property owner takes that property and puts it out for service to the community to house uh, the residents living in it, they open themselves up to complying with certain mandatory basic obligations which are put into place to ensure that the people living in those properties are not endangered and to ensure that the city, the need for city services such as police or fire or general welfare are not increased because we understand as human beings that the, the quality of our housing directly affects the quality of our existence, which directly affects the quality of our choices, which directly affects the quality of the labor that we're able to give, which directly affects our ability to survive. And all of those things are interconnected. But we all share one thing, which is the need for safe, decent housing. And speaking as a tenant, um, I'm very educated. I do not have a college education, but I have three years towards a college education in mental health and human services. I've worked in the field as a paraprofessional. I've worked for the state of Maine for a number of years. I actually worked for Mr. Langsdorf personally at Pretty Flaherty back in the early 90s. I don't know if you remember me or not, but um, that was so long ago, and I was a completely different person back then. I'm not even that person now. I'm, my experiences have led me to this point where I can now stand up here and say, we have a problem, and not only do the landlords need to be proactive, the city needs to be proactive, but the tenants need to be proactive because the tenants are part of the problem. We are part of the problem. And we understand, I myself understand that the landlords are not only subject to um, the land use ordinances and the life safety codes, but they also have property values, um, property taxes, they have mortgages. They are also subject to the entire global economy, the entire fiasco that we're all subject to in one way or another. And um, we also have businesses in town who are hurting for business. <coughs> My idea, sir, uh, gentlemen, is that we start a rehabilitation project and my suggestion is that we create some kind of a network where we screen or we query the product suppliers such as um, the Home Depots, the Lowe's, the Small Time. Actually, in, actually, um, in support of, of Small Business Saturday, Mayor Stokes, um, the local suppliers, the Small Time, the Hammond Lumbers, the LaPointe Lumbers, get them involved to donate or deeply discount products, services, speci specifically products that they can't move on the open market. If it's a product that's not necessarily popular, but it still meets the basic standards, in exchange for a contract or an agreement with the landlord stating that the landlord will either supply um, X percentage amount of the cost for that labor or that product, or if the landlord is of good quality, integrity, is of good character, has tried really hard to keep his building safe and decent, but is just having a hard time with, with out-of-pocket money. Because when we have, let's say, a building that has windows that don't meet the dimensions and those windows need to be replaced, that's major construction. And we're talking building permits and we're talking, you know, thousands of dollars. And in this economy, we don't have that kind of money. But we have companies who need businesses and customers. They also need positive word of mouth. And I'm sure they also want to contribute to the community they live in and they've grown up in and that they've given back to. And as a result of bringing those buildings up to code through the donations or the discount of services and products, we also increase the, building's, building uh, the building um, property values. 
and we increase the um, safety of these buildings that are, are right now condemned. We go in any neighborhood and almost pick out a boarded up, na a boarded up building in any neighborhood. And if we could bring in, um, there, this is a very multifaceted idea which I'm trying to keep straight. Um, the city's role in that, my recognition of these boarded up buildings is that they have been deemed unfit for occupancy but not condemned. And my understanding through talking with Mr. Overton is when a condemnation order is put into place, my understanding is the city actually takes ownership and possession of that property, which tells me that if possession is taken, then financial responsibility is then absorbed as well, which my logic tells me is the reason these condemnation orders have not been issued because the city can't afford to take the financial responsibility. You, that is, there is some truth to that. We've been down, we've actually experienced that uh, situation. But the ordinance that we're considering, the only reason I'm interrupting you is your, your, your discussion really is a much broader discussion. It is. And the ordinance that we are discussing tonight is very narrow and focused, and it really would allow uh, the city to inspect those properties I where fully the city the is providing general assistance subsidy or, or, or contribution. Mm -hmm. And so we're really not, the, the ordinance really this. isn't. That's about fine. a broader issue of condemnation or, or uh, okay. and the life safety codes are in effect. Uh, they've been in effect for many, many years. The sanitary housing is in effect. The inspection program for, you know, um, uh, for other types of, of um, uh, issues involving housing are in effect. What this does is give us the right by ordinance to go in and inspect uh, uh, those uh, uh, units uh, and facilities where the landlord is seeking to have the state participate, not the state, the city to participate. And I fully uh, support the ordinance that's what, as that's it's what written. This is about. And the reason I fully support it is <clears throat> any, any person who knows that their building does comply at least mostly, or if they're willing to enter into a plan of action, would not hesitate to allow the city to come in and inspect the building. If they have something to hide or if they're afraid of what's going to be found, that's where the hesitation comes in. And those are the properties we want to focus on because those are the properties that are the most dangerous. Right. And so I do support you fully. Yeah. Can we table my discussion until a, a Absolutely. future meeting? Absolutely. Yeah, this is a much broader discussion. Absolutely. And this is I just a, wanted to introduce a, myself. And, great. Good and, to see um, you again. And I actually can stop here. Thank you very much. And have Thank a happy you. Thanksgiving. Is there any further discussion on item um, 13186? Mayor. Yes, Councilor Byron.